Okay, first Corian mold. This is the mold for a tracer joiner bar. That's the gel coat in there already. A couple little buttons, I don't know if you can see them. Just for locating the mold. This is the Corian and epoxy mix. You can see. It should pour okay. That's 38% as per Tim's instructions. Okay. Okay, so here's mould ready to go. Get this Corian a good mix. Now my calculation is I need about 1170 mils to fill this mould and I worked on a density of 2.4 for the Corian to allow for all the little gaps between it to fill up and it might have been just because the, the bulk density was 1.4 this is a 2 litre container looks to have 1300 or so mils in it so. Is open. Here goes nothing. I'm very much hoping that this gel coat hasn't gone off too much. It's still got a little tack to it. Yeah, it's going to be way too much, isn't it? Boy, that's. That flows really nicely. It seems to be leveling really nice as well. Well, don't overflow it. Of course, making this on a level surface might have been a good idea too. That looks like it'll be too much. That is crazy. Okay. Well, that's how much is left in the container. So, thanks very much. Okay, so that seemed to be quite a thin mix. You can see some bubbles already appearing. The surface is so slick. Look at that. So I suppose I'll hit it with the hairdryer in a moment and see how we go. I reckon this is worth seeing. Wow, that is really thin. Just a little more footage of hitting it with the hairdryer. Had to use the low speed because the high speed was pushing up a very big wake. Okay, hopefully you can see this. Trying to angle the stream in so it doesn't push the mixture up over the side, which you'll probably see I've already done a couple of places. Tim's suggestion was to use a, um, a torch if you had one, which would be really good because that could put the heat out without blowing on it. But fortunately, I don't have a torch or a heat gun, so there we go. All right.